Kevin Acey put together a chart of all the heartbreaking losses the San Diego Padres suffered in the 2023 season. We know how bad they were in one-run games. I think they lost 23 one-run games. They won two extra inning games all year long, and it took them till mid-September to win those extra inning games. Like, they have just not... It was not a good clutch year for this Padres team. A lot of close losses, and it was so painful this season. Such a long season. And he put together this graph, and holy cow. For the YouTube audience, look how many losses this is. I mean, so many losses for this Padres team. I mean... We can go through them here. Let's go through them here. So, starting off, April 4th, Padres led 5-1 to one in the fifth inning. They lose 8-6. to six. April 13th against Milwaukee, Padres tied the game in the eighth. They lose 4-3 to three in 10. 5-6 uh, against the Dodgers, Tatis RBI double in the eighth. He is stranded, though. Soto, Manny, and Bogarts make outs in the 2-1 to one loss. The next day, that was Josh Hader pitching right. I believe Sunday Night Baseball, May 7th. Mookie has the game-tying home run. Dodgers win 5-2 to two in 10 innings. And that's where it felt like a lot of the season changed. Or it kind of like flipped. It's like, oh man, this is not going to be good, is it? Not going to be great. Obviously, the Kershaw meme was, I believe, on 5-5. And then they lost the next two games of that series. They go to Minnesota, the 10th. At Minnesota, Padres tied the game in the 8th, took the lead in the 10th, lost 4-3 to three in 11 innings. The next day, at Minnesota, Padres score first, regain the lead twice before the Twins go ahead in the 7th and win 5-3. to three. Remember, in that series, Bob Melvin called out his team. I think there was a meeting before he spoke to the media. So he pulled that string pretty early in this season. And they still didn't come back from it. Um, the Yankee series at New... And that doesn't even include when... After the Minnesota series, I believe they went to Dodger Stadium and they got swept. And there were guys laughing in the dugout in the ninth inning while they were about to get swept by the Dodgers there. Like, it was not a good time there. Go to the 27th at New York. Padres come back, take the lead in the 7th. They lose 3-2 to two in 10 innings. 531 at Miami. Padres led for six innings before the Marlins scored both of their runs in the ninth for a 2-1 to one victory. Let's go to June, June 11th at Colorado. Rockies tie it in the eighth. Padres retake the lead in the ninth. Rockies win five to four with two home runs in the ninth. I think that game, was that the game where there was the the weather delay? And I just felt like, okay, this is not going to work out for the Padres. Ryan McMahon homered. Not great. Go to the 19th at San Francisco. Giants score two in the ninth, three in the 10th for a seven to four victory. I think that was the Yaz. Walk-off home run game, 6-20 at San Francisco. Giants score once in each of the final three innings to win 4-3. 6-21, Giants take advantage of a controversial call at the plate. Hold on, 4-2 victory. That was the Gary, one of the Gary Sanchez bad calls by the umpires, and things just didn't go the Padres' way. Just so many excruciating, excruciating losses this season. I'm like barely halfway into this list. 6-29, at Pittsburgh, Pirates come back with three runs in the seventh for a 5-4 to four win that completes the sweep. Remember, that was Tim Hill, one of those plays. That tied the game. They were up by two, I believe. Late in the game, dribbler down the line. Tim Hill picks it up, spins, throws, and it, it's, not a, it's not a good throw. Goes up the right field line, two-run score, tie game, and uh, the Padres obviously end up losing that game. Like, getting swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then at the end, obviously, the Pittsburgh Pirates lose to the Marlins. That's the game that the Padres are officially eliminated. So, like, the Pirates just did not help the Padres. Padres hurt themselves, obviously, but the Pirates were not helpful to the Padres in 2023. How about the next series? At Cincinnati, 6-30. Padres tie the game in the ninth, take the lead in the 10th, again in the 11th before losing 7-5. And that was one of those where it's like, okay, they're actually, they hadn't won an extra inning game yet, obviously. Maybe they're going to get an extra inning win. You had Tatis coming through. I know he had a big hit. There was like some pretty good situational baseball. And 
you still end up losing that game. I remember that home. That was a that home run was a line drive hit on the walk off. Go to seven two. Padres tie the game with back to back home runs in the top of the eighth. I think it was Kim and Tatis, right? Tatis, that was a bomb. Um, but then gave up a two run home run in the bottom of the eighth. I believe that was Nick Martinez. They lose four to three. I forget what the situation was there. I forget if Josh Hader was available or not, but that was a situation where it was like, oh, Bomo, Nick Martinez, he'd been struggling. Don't know if that's the best person to put in there. And the Padres lose that game. 7-15, coming out of the All-Star break. Phillies tie the game in the seventh. Padres retake the lead in the top of the eighth. They lose the lead in the bottom of the eighth in a 6-4 to four defeat. 7-16, Tatis pinch hit single, ties it in the eighth. Padres take the lead in the tenth, but the Phillies win 7-6 in 12 innings. I remember in one of those games, Kyle Schwarber came up with a hit. Bryce Harper came up with a hit. Just losing leads. And that was where, you know, the bullpen, obviously, it was a top five bullpen to start off the season. And this was without Robert Suarez. But then there were rough patches and then there were some injuries and it just wasn't, it was just really, really rocky at a, at a bad time for this Padres team. Um, Let's go to back at home against Pittsburgh. Padres get to a 3-2 lead seven on 7-26. Have the bases loaded with one out in the ninth before two quick outs. I believe Grish was involved in that. 7-31 at Colorado. Grisham home run ties it with two outs in the ninth. Padres load the bases, though, with no outs and don't score in the 10th inning. And the Padres lose 4-3. Another heartbreaking loss there. 8-4 against the Dodgers. Padres take the lead in the fourth. Hold a 3-1 advantage going into the eighth. Dodgers score five runs in the eighth inning to win 10-5. I think that was the game where Suarez couldn't find the strike zone. Then Cosgrove comes in. He can't find the strike zone. Uh, I think maybe Barlow pitched in that game. This isn't even including the game where Seth Lugo's pitching, right? The Padres, they have a 5-0 lead, I think. And then it's 8-5. And then Barlow comes in, gives up a bunch of runs. And all of a sudden, now you're way out of it. So, yeah, just terrible that was that monday day game you know the wraparound series then you go 8-8 at seattle padres go up one nothing in the first but then they go 0 for 9 with runners in scoring position with the game tied in the eighth mariners scored five five runs there in the eighth um 8 13 at arizona padres take a three nothing lead in the first go up four to two in the top of the seventh before the diamondbacks score twice in the seventh and again in the eighth 829 at St. Louis. These were the walk-offs, obviously. Um, Padres, they had a lead. Cardinals scored twice in the seventh to tie the game. And then they win 6-5 to five on Tommy Edmonds' walk-off single in the ninth. Next, I think Hayter was pitching in that game. Next game, Hayter's also pitching. And uh, Padres took a 4-3 lead in the seventh. Edmond had a walk-off home run in the ninth. And I remember like just laughing after that because it's like... <laughs> This season, it just keeps getting worse. You're playing the Cardinals. You should have won these two games. And, of course, the, the San Diego guy walks off the Padres. And Josh Hader, the few games that he was pitching, he gives up walk-offs there. There was one point in time this season where Josh was pitching like once a week, once every eight days. It was so frustrating. It's like, dude, make some of this has to be on the Padres, but this some of this is definitely on Josh. And he outed himself with some of the comments that he made at the end of the season, near the end of the season in San Francisco in September. Um, and it's just, it was just frustrating. Like, again, going back to the team first mentality, like they need more of that in this clubhouse. Um, September 23rd, Padres one for 17 with runners in scoring position, tie game going into the ninth before losing five to two in the 10th. And Tatis was up in that situation. He struck out. I think Soto was up. He struck out, I want to say. Or maybe it was Manny that struck out. Whatever. It was just a bunch of guys. I know Bogarts, he had a ground ball um, late in that game. Like It was just time after time after time. Gut punch after gut punch after gut punch. And that took a while for me to get through that list. If they would have had a few of those games go their right way, this team maybe could have been in a postseason spot. If they could have come through with runners in scoring position and not have went over with runners in scoring position many times this season, 
if they wouldn't have lost 23 one-run games and just been a little bit better with that, this team maybe could have made the postseason.